Hello there, this is Russ Buecher from the Developer's Desk. And in this video, we're going to take a look at the film strip. And the film strip is this little thing you see down here on the image browser. And it shows a uh, image thumbnail, and then it shows some other information like the file name. So you can find it here on the browser, and uh, you can also find it here in the different workflows. For example, here on the stacking workflow, there is a film strip here. Now there's some things you can do with this film strip to uh, show some more information. So first of all, uh, let's um, well first let's talk about navigation. So uh, now you can just click with your mouse on an individual um, thumbnail, and then it shows it up here. Okay, and you'll notice that there is uh, when you click on a thumbnail, there's a little delay as it loads the higher resolution image up here on the image browser. So if I click on this one, see it's kind of pixelated. Now it's loaded in the good one. Uh, now you can control that delay uh, in the preferences screen up here in Control My Icon. But by default, it's about one second. Anyway, so you can click on things. Now you can use your mouse wheel as well. So if I move my mouse wheel like I am right now, it allows you to cycle through the different uh, thumbnails. And the keyboard keys work as well. So if I use the um, home button on the keyboard, it takes you to the first one. And takes you to the last one. I'll go back home and you can use page up and page down as well. Uh, page down, this takes you um, a full uh, film strip view forward. So it's going to move forward in this case, probably about 12 or 13 images. And I just hit page down, page down, page down. So it's a quick way to, to navigate. Now there's no scroll bar here. Sometimes people mistake this little thing here for a scroll bar, but there isn't. Uh, so uh, you'll need to use a keyboard or the mouse to navigate. This little bar here just indicates what is the current um, image. So now what you can do to modify this is you can go right click and configure. The uh, first thing is you can uh, filter the files. So let's say, see I have a bunch of NEFs here, a bunch of raw files. Let's say I didn't want to see those at all. So I hid those and now it says JPEGs left. I'm not too sure what this is a picture of. Uh, okay, let's go back here. Now if I wanted to show maybe just uh, movie files, you could do that. But there's, uh, let's see if there's any movie files. There we go. No movie files. Let's go back. JPEG, RAW, and movie. Okay. So that's one way you can filter. Now, uh, another way that you can change it up here, I'll just do this to bring some images back, is you can control what is displayed. Now, you'll notice that uh, here it just shows a thumbnail and a file name. And you could change the order. So you just select it, say a file name. You can see it's below the thumbnail here. And uh, you go up and it changes the order. Now that is useful. And I'm just going to drag this higher. If you wanted to see some more information, you can easily set it up. Let's say I wanted to see oh, the thumbnail, a file name, and uh, I wanted to see the dimensions of this image. So what you can do is just select over here. And these are all the different fields that you can display here. I want to see the dimensions. So you double click or hit this button to bring it over. So it shows the dimensions of the image. And how about an aperture, shutter speed, and the ISO. I think we have another one up here just called um, Exposure, which is a combination of those. That doesn't take up as much room, so I'll get rid of this one, this one, and this one. Yeah, it shows some other things here too, the lens type. And even the shutter count on your camera. The IPTC data is the information that you have embedded when you use the, uh, the metadata tab here.
So you can get carried away if you want. You could do something like this. You can go uh, put a whole bunch of things here. And just size it however you need. Now you may have seen in one of our previous videos that there was also a histogram available. It's at the bottom here. Let's bring it up to the top. So that's a good way to help judge uh, your exposure. Now you can do the same thing here. It has a separate settings. So in here, you might not want a file name because you don't have a lot of room there. And whenever you click on a, a uh, image, it shows you the file name down here. Well, if the path is short enough, there it is. So let's go with thumbnail and histogram. And it'll remember the settings for this particular stacking workflow thumb strip. So these can be different. Now there's also a uh, neat synchronization trick here. Normally when you capture an image, if you have sync uh, set up like this, that means uh, the image browser will show you immediately the most recently image captured, which is normally how you want it. But you can go over here when you're doing, uh, say, stacking, and you could say sync with the main browser right here. So that means every time you click on something here, it also shows it in the browser. And the advantage of that is uh, you might have this this quite small. And it's difficult to see. And there's no, um, the magnifier isn't really set up here. But it is here. And what works really good is you can actually um, set this so it's full screen and put another um, window on, on another screen so you can see it full screen and have the uh, magnifier and everything. Okay, let's see what else we can do. I'm going to turn off that sync. Now, when you um, have an image like this, You can see these a lot larger. These were off of a D800. If I right click here, you can flag an image. Um, this could be a situation where you want to just flag a couple images for uh, looking at later on to mark them. And you see there's also keyboard shortcuts for the image browser. So we go down to the ones that have IB. Toggle magnification. And here you can toggle a flag. So you could set a key that will set that flag. And from here, you can delete an image. You can convert it to high quality because by default, you know, when you um, navigate to um, a folder like this, you might have a lot of images in there. It's going to generate kind of a low quality thumbnail, which is normally good enough because you're only looking at that thumbnail in this very small area down here. Um, so, uh, but if you wanted to, you could increase the quality of the thumbnail. You just say convert to high quality. And now the thumbnail uh, looks a little nicer. It's not a big difference though, but it does, if you don't have it um, in a high quality all the time, um, it helps um, increase the speed at which thumbnails are generated. And there's a setting in the tools and uh, preferences for that as well to say whether by default you want to generate high quality thumbnails. You can also browse and this takes you to the folder where these files are. And allows you to set another folder. Kind of the uh, same idea as this over here. You can refresh it in case there's any new files uh, have been added in there, although normally the system will detect that new folders 
or new files are being added into the folder and will add those in for you automatically. Now you can also print out uh, a little bit here. So if I go print and list, and this print function is only available on the Pro version. Prints out a list, just kind of a quick contact sheet. And you can print that out to uh, PDF if you want. Save to PDF, and that will um, take it out to a PDF, and then you can maybe email it to someone. Print again, print detail. This gives more information per image. And it's going to do all of them. Usually a good idea to put it to PDF, and uh, then if you want, you could print individual pages out of the PDF, or you could print individual pages out of here as well. And you could also run a batch file, and uh, so this allows you to create a batch file, you know, like a DOS batch file, and then um, you can specify it in the tools, preferences, under MISC, here's the batch file right here. When you capture an image, you can have it automatically launch a certain batch file, and the image name and location will be passed to the batch file, and maybe your batch file will be used to copy it to another location or launch a third-party app of some kind, maybe a, a photo editor. So you put your batch file here, then you right-click, and you go run batch file, and it will run the batch file for this image. It's a good option to have if you have to do some automated post-processing on your captured images. Let's see, what else can I tell you here? Well, when you select an image, it shows you the name on the bottom. Total amount of images in this folder. And that's about it. The one thing to note, though, is Nikon cameras can capture TIFF images. And uh, however, our image browser does not handle TIFF at all. If you have some TIFF images in this folder, it won't see them. Now, really, the reason, or my personal reason for that, is you know if you're going to generate an image of that high of image size, and you know a TIFF image coming off a D800 is 100 meg. It's huge. It takes forever to transfer. You know, it's way worse than transferring a NAF. And then the advantage of a NAF is it's a lot smaller. And it allows you to still tweak white balances and some things before you convert it to a TIFF or a JPEG or whatever you want. So um, TIFFs just aren't that terribly useful directly off the camera, and we try to discourage it. So our image browser uh, does not show it. That is the film strip. Have fun.